What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. So this is a big day. We finally got the virtual card in for Baby Doge. And we were talking about this before this happened, talking about whether or not it could pump or not before the, when it actually happens. But unfortunately, we didn't get a major pump for Baby Doge, but we did get, you know, a really big update for our utilities. So we're going to talk about this. Um, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also definitely check out CryptoMillionaires.shop for the best crypto merch in the industry. But without further ado, let's talk about Baby Doge. So we're going to do the technical analysis at the end. But uh, right now we are down a little bit. We're down 5.5% in the last 24 hours. So we are down. And uh, yeah, it's not that bad. But yeah, we are down. Everything else is down too, though. So you can't really blame Baby Hills for being down. Most things in the market are down. And there's more than just crypto. Even stocks are down. But we have that going on. And then we also have some more holders. And now we have 1,741,971 holders. So that's pretty good as well. But the big news here is that we finally have the virtual card. And this is powered by FCF. So this is pretty cool, the fact that we finally got this card in. Now they have some frequently asked questions that people have been asking about the card. So we're gonna talk about that. The first one here says, where don't these cards work? Well, they're virtual, so they don't work in person pretty much. So they said these prepaid virtual debit cards uh, do not have 3D secure, like two-factor authorization for card transactions, and therefore they will not be usable if the merchant slash platform requires 3ds so there's that and they say visa mastercard or the issuing banks may choose to restrict their services in specific countries regions or even specific merchants they said over here merchants and psps uh may have or may choose to not accept prepaid virtual debit cards so it's completely up to the merchant pretty much um, and then where do these cards work? Well, they pretty much just said that. So there's that. And then uh, can I convert funds back into crypto? They said no. When you swap it from crypto to fiat, it's, it's there. So pretty much the way they do it, it's inside a USD. So it's not, um, it's not like we're paying for stuff in Baby Doge. So it is a virtual Baby Doge card, but it's not necessarily a crypto card so you're not paying in crypto you're transferring your crypto for usd so your usd is not going to go up and down like how crypto does it's just going to stay as usd so we're not paying in baby doge it's inside of usd so that's uh, important to realize there now pretty interesting to have some other frequently asked questions here um like rich regions are they available in they pretty much say the regions that they're available in are the regions that they're available in that's pretty much how they responded here it says the virtual prepaid debit cards are not available to ofac sanctioned countries or countries that are not permitted by the issuing banks which means you gotta look up the terms and services of uh, visa and massa cards for fcf so yeah you gotta do your own research is pretty much what they're saying uh, what are the fees? So we have down here the fees of, for using FCF pay to load balance onto these prepaid virtual cards. $6 for new card creation, uh, $3 balance refill action, 3.5% reload fee, and $2 monthly maintenance fee. So there are a lot of fees. And foreign exchange fees may apply if purchases are made in a currency other than the cards in native currency. So for me, I'm inside of a different uh, country. I'm inside Thailand. So... It'll, they're going to charge me foreign exchange fees as well. So I'm probably not going to use it while I'm out here because that's a lot of fees. And then I also get the foreign exchange fees and then foreign transaction fees because I'm outside the country. So yeah, a little bit too much uh, fees for me to use right now. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, fees here. So that's pretty much those frequently asked questions that they have there. And here is the card on the official website. So you can get your card now. They have Visa and MasterCard available. Uh, there's a five thousand dollar balance limit, so you can't go over five thousand. Uh, you can refill your card at any time. The balance is held in USD. You can get as many cards as you want, and low fee for new cards is just what they're saying here. Um, and then down here, you can see six dollars for the new card, three dollars for the top up fee, which those aren't bad at all. The new card fee or the top up fee, 
But the 3.5% load fee could definitely add up. And you can see it down here because 3% of $5,000 plus the other fees is uh, $5,193.50. So every $5,000 you do, you got to pay $5,193.50. So let's say you just want to do the bare minimum, which is $50, right? Well, if you come over here and look at $50, you're going to have to pay $7.88 per $50. So I would say the fees are, um, yeah, the fees are up there. And it's pretty much expected when you're dealing with crypto. When you're dealing with crypto, you're paying unnecessary fees anytime you're dealing with crypto. Just because it's crypto. And this is how crypto works. You just pay uh, unnecessary fees anytime you deal with crypto. But yeah, every $100 will cost you $9.75. So there are fees associated with it with this so definitely uh realize that before you go through and do it um you can go ahead and do this if you want and you just have to have your name address city state country uh phone number email all that good stuff so uh, i guess go ahead and do that if you want to do it um you could, it says that you're spending crypto easily which really you're just transferring your crypto to cash so i guess it's um I guess it's interesting. Um, I would say this. This is good for people that don't already have bank accounts and good for people that don't have cards. But in order to buy crypto, you need a card or a bank account. But see, the, the nice thing about crypto, you can literally take and buy a prepaid card, like a prepaid gift card, right? It's just a prepaid card. You can buy that with cash. So you, ne you, you don't necessarily need a bank account or anything. You can buy a prepaid card with cash. And then you can take, you can buy crypto with that cash. And then with the crypto, now you can buy, uh, now you can load up this virtual card. So I guess this option is really good for people that don't have traditional banking. You know, maybe people are, that are inside of parts of the world where traditional banking is just not available. So this, this is definitely good for that. Um, but yeah, personally, I think there are a lot of fees tied to this. And this is just my honest opinion. I do like Baby Doge, and I'm going to continue to stay with Baby Doge. Obviously, I'm not talking down on it. I think it's good. I think it's definitely good. But uh, looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's cool. But I don't think I'm, I would be using this on the daily. It just doesn't make sense uh, for me personally because, well, I'm already in Thailand. I'm already paying international transaction fees on all my credit cards and stuff. So I'm already paying that. And then uh, ATM fees and stuff. So I'm already paying enough fees. I don't need to pay anymore right now. But when I get back to the States, I might actually uh, sign up for this and see how it works. But yeah, it seems pretty cool. So shout out to them for that. But um, yeah, um, you're always going to deal with fees with crypto. But uh, moving on from that, though, we have uh, another Binance tease. So we were talking about this during the last stream, how, how they've been teasing a Binance listing. Just look at this. Make Binance chain great again. So I think this is a hint. Like they want to get listed to Binance. Now, I don't know whether or not this is a tease of, hey, we're about to get listed to Binance. But we know that they want to get listed there. So that's pretty interesting. I want to see us get listed to Binance as well. So hopefully we can get it. And hopefully we have a Binance listing in the future. Um, we also have this, which is a new farm on Baby Doge. Baby Doge swap. Uh, Peppa Inu. That's what it's called. Peppa Inu. Yeah, but yeah, they're on there now. So shout out to them. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look here at the farm now. So this is uh, BNB to Peppa. That's what they have it called up here. And as Baby Dose has mentioned many times, the APR will go down when people, when more people join the farm. And then on top of the APR going down, they do not promote or endorse any of these projects. So get in at your own risk. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, disclaimers they placed there. So so they can't get you know in trouble or anything. But all, of, all in all, um, you can go down here and look at this. You can see here PPC to BNB. Uh, they have other farms as well. Uh, this one's BNB to Peppa. This is the one that they just now listed, which is BNB to Peppa. So you can come here and get that. I guess if you want BNB to Peppa, 521% APR, $16,000 liquidity in there. So yeah, that's in there now. But let's go over some more baby doge swap stuff. So our liquidity now at $46.55 million. Our volume for the last 24 hours is $333,000. And our last 24-hour baby dose burn is $7.674 trillion. 
So we got um, a good amount of burns happening right now. Um, not much, but, you know, it's something. And over time, it's going to count up. It's going to add up over time. Trust me. Like, especially if you just take a uh, copy and paste this, right? If you want to copy and paste this, the 24-hour burn, into the calculator here, you're going to see some big results. Because if we do this right here, hypothetically speaking, if we do this for the next 365 days, so for the next year, we are going to burn 2.8 quadrillion just through auto burns. So million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, 2.8 quadrillion just through auto burns. So let's say we do this for the next 10 years. Well, this is the bare minimum, the bare minimum of our burns. This is saying we, our volume doesn't increase at all. Nothing increased. We just go at the same low value for the next 10 years. Well, that's still 28 trillion or 28 quadrillion. So if you're going in baby dose for long term, you know the volume is going to increase with time. So, you know, there's no telling how much we could burn in 10 years. Like we could literally burn over hundreds of quadrillions, literally having only trillions left in 10 years if uh, crypto lasts that long, <laughs> which it should. But yeah, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Now, uh, as for the other stuff here, uh, baby Doe is now ranked at 119 and like i said we're going to talk about the uh, technical analysis for baby Doe's and bitcoin as well so we are down at 8z24 so that's pretty low uh we have been dropping inside of baby doge there's no denying that we have been going down in price it looks like we're inching closer and closer down here to the support at about 8z22 or 8z2250 really so yeah 8z2250 it looks like we're inching down there uh, we got rejected all the way up here again at 18,500 earlier yesterday. We got rejected there. So um, it looks like we're going to continue on this downtrend here. Now, that's not to say that we're going to, you know, just downtrend forever. But obviously for the time being, yeah, it looks like we might actually be touching that support. Now, the last time we got all the way down here, we didn't even touch the support. We got close to it, but we didn't touch it. We hit 2320. And uh, this time we are right now, like 24.35. It looks like we could get down there, but we'll see. Something like what happened the last time could also happen again, where we just have another pump. Like we've been kind of doing the same thing for a long time. So maybe we trade sideways for a little bit, and then we have another major pump bringing us back to like AZ40. But yeah, we'll have to see when it comes to that. But that's all we really know right now. That's all we really know. So also for Bitcoin, we just now had the Fed meeting and all that. They raised it by another 25 uh, basis points for the interest rates. So interest rates have increased and all that good stuff. Um, that caused Bitcoin to temporarily rise because, you know, when, in, when interest rates increase, that means the U.S. dollar is essentially going down. So people are going to take their money out of that and then they're going to put it into Bitcoin because Bitcoin, when the dollar goes down, Bitcoin goes up. When the dollar goes up, Bitcoin goes down. So if the next meeting they don't raise it, that means that we're doing good inside of uh, the economy and interest and interest rates are going to go down. We're doing good in the economy. Inflation is going down. So that's pretty much what would happen there. And if inflation is going down, the dollar is going up, which means Bitcoin is going down. So and when we look at it from this way, inflation is going up. Interest rates are going up. Dollar is going literally down, which means now Bitcoin's going up. So that's pretty much what we got going on right now. And that's why we had the little increase inside of Bitcoin. Kind of sucks. I wanted, I was hoping that it would look good like financially for our economy because, you know, I was like, you know, I'll go ahead and short some Bitcoin over here because maybe maybe we we're actually doing better in the economy than we thought. But no, not really. We didn't really do too good <laughs> but anyways this is interesting now i still think that bitcoin is still set to decrease notice how that happened and then bitcoin barely rise by anything and the fact that it could barely increase through that like kind of shows me that we were probably going to have some type of pullback again soon and that's pretty much what i'm expecting here with bitcoin even on the oscillator we're still overbought here on the oscillator so we're still set for a pullback in my personal opinion here. So I guess the 27K can still get hit. Um, also, if you want to look at the one week chart for Bitcoin, uh, we're way, way overbought on this one week chart, way overbought. And it's been going on since the beginning of the year. So yeah, so yeah, there was even a bullish signal here at the beginning of the year, you know, even before the beginning of the year. So, you know, like last year, like we were literally looking around March, around February last year. It was showing us late. 
eventually it's going to be bullish because like we were oversold twice and the selling started to slow down, which is a bullish signal that the bull market's about to come to end. So we had that bullish signal since February of last year. It's like, look, we might not be bullish for this year, but going into the next year, it's looking bullish. So right here, what we're looking at is the overbought area. If we kind of equate it to what just happened here, we could continue to rise a little bit even before it drops. Like it could continue to go like this and then slowly but surely go down. So we have the potential of still being bullish throughout certain parts of the year. But ultimately, I still think there's going to be another pullback. That's just what I think personally. But anyways, with time, we're going to be bullish with time. And the actual bull market, you know, is really dictated by the Bitcoin halving, which is going to be around March of next year. So I think there's going to be a really, really nice bull run coming in next year. But this year, this year is going to be like the year of like, it's, it's going to be like the year of flattening out. Like, I think we're going to trade sideways for a while, maybe do 20Ks or 30Ks. But that's still better than trading around 16K like we were previously. So trading around the 20, 29K, 30K areas, I still think this is a win. Even if we pull back down to 25K, even if we pull back down to 20K, we're still winning at that point. And, you know, that's just what I believe personally. I still think we're going to be winning even if we pull back down that much. Because, look, we still have the trend line here. We're still respecting the trend line. So as long as we respect that trend line and we don't go below it, we're still bullish here. In my personal opinion. But like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this financial advice. None of that. But yeah, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Like I said, again, none of this financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section. And let me know what you all want me to go over next. And definitely check out CryptoMillionaires.shop for the best crypto merch in the industry. And as always, I'll be back with another video.